Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I'm Holly, a freelance illustrator, and I've been travelling and working in this van with my husband and our two dogs for over a year now. We're currently exploring Devon and Cornwall, in the southwest tip of England, and we're slowly getting into the swing of life down here by the sea. Join us for another week on the road. Good morning, we are in the town of St Ives this morning. Uh, we woke up in a lovely park up about 15 minutes away from St Ives. It kind of felt like in the middle of nowhere, we were just in a lay-by next to a road and it was so quiet all night and all morning as well actually. Hello, little dog. Uh, today we are going to be doing a mix of work and exploring. It's really lovely weather today after having about four or five days of lots of rain and wind and grey weather so it's nice to have some winter sun. Uh, so we're gonna get out and explore the town a little bit. Hey Quentin. The whole family's gonna go. Me, Quentin, Craig and Midge, we're all going to go into town. Uh, I want to get a coffee, but I want to get a coffee every day, so sometimes I have to try and resist. But yeah, we need to come back to the van over lunchtime and get a good chunk of work done as well. So yeah, let's go explore St Ives. I've not been here for ages. See, I've never taken Quentin to St Ives though. It was before your time. <laughs> Craig is going on a work call, so I'm going to very quietly make lunch. We've got falafels, so I'm going to make falafel wraps, coriander, salad, kebab wraps. We just did a few hours of work. Craig was on a call and I sent off my sketch to BBC Wildlife magazine. The sunlight's rapidly leaving us. We've paid for some more parking here and we're gonna go back into the town. You can already tell that the light's going a lot. We're gonna take the dogs out again, have a little break from work and we're probably gonna be working this evening as well when we get back to the van. <sighs> yeah. a lot of background noise right now because we're in Chew Corner which is where both dogs have chew bones and it's just an audio experience. Yeah I put some peanut butter on their chew bones and they're loving it and we've got the heating on as well so there's probably a lot of background noise. We've left St Ives now we did a few errands we went and got some more dog food for our dogs obviously. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Sainsbury's we got some more oat milk and I also wanted some chocolate and then we saw some alcohol free Guinnesses and we've come back to the park up that we woke up at this morning just because it's a pretty good one. I imagine it's a completely different story in the summer, very busy. Uh, I've got loads of editing to do and Craig's going to work too and that's probably our evening. The little sock puppet. One of my patrons says that he looks like a sock puppet and I've never forgotten because it's just so accurate. Do you look like a sock puppet? But you're a real doggy. Ah. My upload arms. They're so yeah. stiff. Well, ease them out then. Ease them out. You've got to flex those muscles. I've got really stiff shoulders. Ah. 
That's it. Just pour it all the way in. Lovely. Last on salt. Yummy. Vegan beer fest 20. Tucks and done. Nos vamos! Well, good morning. Welcome to Wednesday. We are back at St. Ives in the car park. This morning had breakfast and left our park up and then remembered we'd left our dog poo bags by our front wheel which we usually remember to bring into the cab and store in this box that we have. It's actually like a compost box so it's got this filter in it so it stops the smell from coming out. It's actually a van life essential if you have dogs because you can't always find bins to put your dog poos in so we sometimes have to have them on board and that box is very useful for not making lots of smells uh, anyway yeah we left them at the park up so we had to go back the last thing we want to do is start annoying locals and we definitely try to live by the leave no trace motto craig's gone down to the beach to wash his shoe because he stood in something smelly last night in the dark very very glamorous got some quite not glamorous things to do that are kind of like building up for example we need to do our laundry all of our dog uh, blankets stink i think i said this in a previous video it's quite hard to find laundrettes that will wash dog bedding so we've also got a huge bag of recycling we only have this problem in england there's just nowhere to do public recycling in scotland there seems to be more options and definitely mainland europe france spain there's places to recycle your plastic and your glass and your tin everywhere. But here we really struggle. It ends up becoming a huge bag that we have to like drag around the van. But yeah, in about an hour's time, I'm going to get a haircut. I'm just getting a trim because I've got loads of split ends. I think tomorrow we're going to try and find another leisure center to have a shower. Telling you all of the tidbits of our life. He's got the wire wrapped around his little curly tail. Something exciting though, we very recently booked our tickets to go over to France. So we're going to be doing that in just a few weeks time last year we did this as well we we'll spend the worst months of the year december january february out of the country in europe and specifically spain is where we're trying to head to we love spain a lot and it's such a huge country and we felt like we didn't get to see as much as it as we wanted to and also craig's learning spanish we're really keen to get back there i will be showing our adventures in europe on this channel. So I just announced over on Patreon that I'm going to be doing Vlogmas this year. I think it's my fifth year on Patreon doing Vlogmas. Yeah, so I'm, I'm vlogging every day and uploading every day in December and you'll be able to see our crossing over into France and mm. the first couple of weeks in Spain. So if you want to see that, go over to Patreon for December. You can just stay for a month and you can get a video every day in December if you'd like to. And you can also go back and watch the hundreds of videos it must be hundreds by now that i've got on patreon <sighs> i think that's all there is to update you on i'm just gonna sit here and wait for craig to get back and midge they both went to the beach didn't they i've walked him up a massive hill and he got really tired uh, but he did get to meet everyone at the surf school today and they gave him lots of fuss and let's see that boy <laughs> should we set you up with a little pill win and we put your aids over here oh that's what we wanted, wasn't it?
I just got back from getting my hair done. They were really nice in there. Uh, it's called Beach Combers if you are looking for a new hairdressers. I got quite a bit chopped off because it's really dry and damaged. Um, so my hair feels much better now. Um, and they were giving me lots of tips on like how to get the moisture back into my hair because oh my gosh it's dry. I think it's got drier since being on the road because I don't have as many opportunities to like condition it and put masks on it and things so that's really bad for like bleached hair but you might have noticed that I'm growing it out. Yeah so this is my natural hair colour. Much much darker but I can't keep up with having bleached hair anymore. It's just going to be much healthier when it's not bleached within an inch of its life. I'm making some lunch. Got some couscous that I just made. Some beetroot. It's kind of a struggle to cook on such a slope in this car park. Hey, unos gatos over there. Uh, por ahí, un gato grande. Tabby. Un gato ginger pequeño. E un gato marrón, castaño, pequeño as well. That's, that's <gasps> Today, well firstly, it's a snow day. We woke up to snow. I could hear pitter pattering on the roof as I woke up and I just thought it was rain and like raindrops falling off the trees overhead. But it was actually snow and like massive snowflakes as well. We've driven through the snow and it was fine. It was a bit scary, but uh, the snow's kind of melting already. Uh, we both had showers at Leisure Centre and now we are outside a place called Crescent Kernel, which is in Red Ruth and this is a museum slash archive, the biggest archive of Cornish history. There's lots of like photographs and documents and um, recordings of throughout Cornish history so we're really hoping this will be a good place to learn more about like Cornish culture and traditions and I'm hoping that there's a bit on folklore because I think that's what I'm most interested in and I, I assume there's going to be a lot about mining because Red Ruth was very um, central to Cornwall's mining industry. We'll take you inside and hopefully we can film because I, I remember in last week's video uh, saying at the end that we wanted to find more Cornish culture and more quirky kind of things to learn about and show you so hopefully we get some inspiration for that inside. We're looking at some tapestries right now. I really like this one. They were made by skilled seamstresses or sewers, I don't know the proper word, in the 80s and 90s. And there's 58 of them in total. And they kind of show all the different elements of Cornish history and culture. This one, the Middle Ages. Tin and wool made Cornwall prosperous with many towns granted royal charters. The church was at the heart of everyday life. Oh, embroiderers, skilled embroiderers, obviously. There we go. <laughs> Just really like them. And they've they've got some on display, but if they haven't got them on display then they're in this archive to have a little look at. Embroidery of important moments throughout Cornish yeah. history as well. The Rebellion, fourteen ninety seven. Look at that puffin. Oh my gosh, and a heron. Oh I love it. After researching Cornish folk customs online, I came across a festival called the Obby Oss. Celebrated in Padstow, North Cornwall, it's one of the strangest street spectacles I've ever seen. 
The obios, this black circular curtain slash skirt thing with a strange horse-shaped head, is a version of a hobby horse, which is something separate from the Victorian toy horse on a stick that you might be thinking of. In this context, the hobby horse is a costumed character that appears in traditional seasonal customs and processions. In the UK, these are typically associated with May Day celebrations or Morris dancing. The dancers underneath the obios wear tall pointed hats and grotesque masks and dance along the streets in procession with musicians following along. The earliest recorded mention of the obios at Padstow dates from 1803, although May Day celebrations themselves date back to the 16th century. It's the next day now, we've woken up at our park up and Craig has so much energy this morning that he's going to go walk. It's only about 50 minutes away. There's um, some Neolithic standing stones. They're not standing stones. It's a stone structure. Uh, anyway, he's going to explain more about it. And I'm going to stay here with my grumbly pug on my lap and my cup of tea and read my book. So that's us away. We're on a little journey. We're going to walk up to the coit, which is a cromlech, I think it's called, or a dolmen, in this quaint little tiny little village. I think it's probably about two or three houses here, that's about it. It's super bright out here this morning, it's so different from yesterday. Yesterday was snowing, just on the way out to a Neolithic structure. I'm going to look at a dolmen, which is like a little baby stone henge. So two stones and then a stone on top. Uh, this is probably, well the stones have been here for a long long time. And things fallen down a couple of times and people have rebuilt it and rebuilt it in the 1800s some rich person rebuilt it and then it fell down in 1966 and so it was rebuilt again and finalized in 2014 don't mind me everyone I'm just gonna swing by this neolithic structure and get some content it's a gnarly little woodland walk this comes out right next to the stream I'm probably not even going the right way to be honest I haven't checked the map in a while almost feels quite mangrovey in here This might have been a bit of a silly idea. There you go, 3,836 years before we started counting in the opposite way. It's not so we're talking five and a bit thousand years old. It's just under that. How on earth did people put stone slabs on top of each other like that? It's nuts. So this is it. Big old Neolithic thing from four and a bit, five thousand years ago. Three stones and a big one on top. It's also called the giant's frying pan, which I get totally. Like it'd be sizzling from this direction, flipping up a nice little Alfredo or something. So yeah, this is cool. say goodbye to the dolmen, we say see you soon, I head back to the van, get a cup of tea and we're going to try and make our way to Falmouth. Hopefully Holly's going to try and meet up with one of our patrons which will be lovely. I think that's the first time that Holly's ever done that, that'd be cool. And I'm going to try and persuade Holly to go to a tap room that I wanted to go to for a very very long time. They make the trubbiest beers there. So hopefully we'll go and get a taste and maybe we'll end up staying in an industrial estate tonight if I get really drunk. Thanks for walking with me this morning. Just spotted my wife in the very far distance and I think there's a small black pug walking alongside with her. Oh look who it is! <laughs> so you've reached the end of our video, thank you for watching. Uh, we did end up going to Falmouth in the end and I did meet my illustration friend also called Holly. It was lovely to meet you, Holly. And I managed to drag Holly kicking and screaming into the brewery. We had some really good beer. We had a really nice pizza. You join us in Tintagel, which is where we're going to be saying goodbye to you. Uh, this is the end of our Cornwall trip. We are cutting it uh, a little bit short. Um, we're heading back to my hometown because I've had some new prints and stickers 
delivered to a family address and I need to go see them. It's the suspense of not seeing them is killing me. So I need to go and photograph them and hopefully get them up in my shop. Probably my next video will be me uh, sharing all of the things in my shop restock. So look forward to that. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this Cornwall series from us and we'll see you again very soon. Yeah, let's drive home. Bye. Bye.